Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today, I wanna to take you back to the spring of 1862 in Western Virginia. It was a difficult place to be in during the early part of the Civil War. In fact, throughout much of the war, it was a dangerous place to say the very least. The infrastructure of that part of the state was difficult. There was mountainous terrain, railroads, difficult to get around. The roads were uh, uneven in terms of quality, politically difficult. Uh, that part of the state was in process of separating. In fact, it already had been separated for quite some time politically the unionist part of the state was on track a year later to become the state of West Virginia, the new state of West Virginia. Meanwhile, there were still pockets of folks who were loyal to the Southern cause. As a result, there were Confederate forces. There were partisan rangers or guerrilla bands, if you will, were active in the area. Union forces were probably not enough to really keep the area safe from various transgressions. There were, however, support supporting Union troops coming in from the area, including Ohio, which takes me to the gentleman pictured here. Uh, he is uh, a member of the 34th Ohio Infantry, which is known as, popularly known as Piotr's Zouaves in honor of its commander, Abram Sanders Piot. Those of you who are students of the Civil War are very familiar with Zouaves, the craze that swept the U.S. just before the war. These French colonial northern Algerian inspired uniforms with the baggy pants and uh, leggings and various decorative coats and hats, as you can see here, worn by this gentleman. This is Corporal Hawley F. Ranson, who was a member of Company D. He was a clerk in Bellevue, Ohio, before the war began. And so the Zouave craze when we talk about it, we often think of the Eastern regiments, Pennsylvania, New York, Massachusetts, and we forget that the Zouave mania, as sometimes it's referred to, had its origins in Chicago. So its origins in the Midwest and Ohio being in that region, all of these Zouave regiments had their own unique looks particularly in this case, you'll notice Corporal Ranson's cap, which is has the edges fold up. He has the regimental numbers 34 on it. You can see a tassel coming off of the side. Quite, quite impressive. And by the way, I should tell you, he's sitting, or pardon me, standing for this pose about the time he enlisted in the summer of 1861. The photographer who made this image is particularly well known, the African American photographer, James Presley Ball, who was operating in Cincinnati, a particularly talented man, one of the early black photographers in the United States. So Ranson and his company D of the 34th started out in Ohio and in Cincinnati and when times got tough in Western Virginia, the 34th Ohio was one of many Buckeye State Regiments that moved in to help. Now, I wanna bring you to May, the spring of 1862, May of 1862. In fact, May 1st, there was Union forces moving into Western Virginia, the town of Princeton in particular, it lay in ruins the city, the town had been burned by Confederates in the face of these approaching Union forces. That town had changed hands at least twice 
in the weeks leading up to its burning as both sides struggled for control of this strategically important part of the state and of the region. So two weeks later, on May 16th, Confederates drove the Union soldiers from the town. The next day, as Union forces attempted to retake the initiative, an ambush by Southern forces prompted a further withdrawal of the Bluecoats. There were three Ohio regiments involved on the Union side, and it was a tough fight, 113 casualties over this two-day period. And that, though that may not seem like a tremendous amount when you think of the larger battles of Antietam and Gettysburg and Fredericksburg, Stones River, uh, the list goes on and on. Um, 113 doesn't sound like a lot, but 113 folks in a two-day running battle in this part of Western Virginia, that's a lot. Any one, one casualty is a lot. So we have 113. One of those men, in fact, was Ranson. He did suffer a wound, and it was severe in his left leg. Now, he was taken to a regimental hospital, and... Hopefully, he was. there was hope that he was going to make a recovery. But as it turns out, the Battle of Princeton, as it went down in history, was Ransom's last fight. That leg wound proved just too difficult to take care of, and they wound up amputating the leg. He succumbed to its effects on May 30th of 1862, just about two weeks after the battle. His remains were buried in the area and eventually moved to the National Military Cemetery in Grafton, West Virginia. So there you have it, the story of a Buckeye Zouavs who fought in Western Virginia and sacrificed his life. He would never know that that part of the state would eventually spin off and separate and become the state of West Virginia. And though he would never know that, he did play a part in keeping the state loyal and helping it to become the state that it is today. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail.